Je vous parlais de, de la conversion. I'm going to tell you about uh, photovoltaic conversion of solar energy. First of all, we need to study the energy coming from the sun and its characteristics. We're talking about electromagnetic energy with a distribution focusing on the visible spectrum, 0.55 microns, characterized by an energy power which outside of the atmosphere is in the order of 1,360 watts per square meter, but on the Earth level we're talking about 1,000 watts per square meter. This po solar power is distributed evenly across the world, in all countries, over the seas, and the distribution is comprised between 0.9 uh, megawatt hour per square meter per year in northern countries, uh, northern European countries, and up to two or three megawatt hours per square meter per year in the sunniest areas. In Paris, we have approximately one megawatt hour per square meter per year which means in July, approximately 5.5 kilowatt hours per square meter per day. Now, what about the conversion process that turns solar energy in electrical power? This is done when photons are absorbed by matter. In the matter, the photons are absorbed by electrons, the electrons that constitute the chemical bonds. The photon transfers the energy to an electron, to a bond, and the electron changes the energy level. It becomes excited, and this leads to the creation of an electron hole pair, and the electron already has uh, electrical power. Now, in order to go back to uh, equilibrium, it changes the energy and releases heat most of the time. For photosynthesis, this goes through an intermediate photovoltaic intermediate, chlorophyll, which then allows to perform photosynthesis. And for photovoltaic techniques, we try to find a way to obtain electrical power through an external circuit, and that's the whole point of the uh, solar cell development. Solar cells. Their development started in 1954 with the silicon, and as early as 58, the first satellites uh, became equipped with photovoltaic solar energy for their electrical power needs. How does a solar cell work? operate. A semi, an N-type and a P-type semiconductor were juxtaposed, and if the semiconductors of the same type, we're talking about homojunction, they are made of silicon, and when they are juxtaposed at the interface between the N and P areas, a very strong electrical field is created. An electron is negatively charged, whereas the hole is positively charged. As soon as the electron finds itself in the electrical field, it will be pushed in the opposite direction of the field, whereas the hole will go towards the field. So the PN junction, the solar cell, allows to separate the electron hole pair, thanks to the field effect, in order to collect power in the external circuit. This is the current tension characteristic, current voltage, sorry, characteristic that allows to recover the electrical power. Nowadays, there are several options of uh, photovoltaic cells. All are based on PN junctions. There is the silicon one with the uh, little cut wafers, but there are also three options shown here. The thin film options, the first one with amorphous silicon deposited on a glass, a few microns of thickness, and two more options, the cadmium telluride, also called CDT, and the CIGS, i.e. an alloy with copper, indium, gallium, and selenium. And the thin film solar cells have a slightly lower yield versus silicon, 25.6 for silicon and 20% for the thin film ones. However, their production capacity and their characteristics are different. 
Here we have the example of a conventional silicon polycrystalline solar cell. You can see the various stages that go into the production uh, until the uh, collection grid and the uh, yield chart. Here we have the example of a thin film solar cell. It is mainly used for large areas. We see here thin film solar cells uh, directly deposited uh, with technologies derived from uh, flat screen, and we can have up to five uh, square meters of area. There is now a new type of solar cells, two-level solar cells, solar cells based on molecular compounds, organic compounds, or hybrid solar cells. And with these solar cells, it is possible to connect directly the molecule as in the case in natural chlorophyll, to extract electrons and holes in the external circuit. There are three categories. The uh, dye solar cells developed by their inventor, Michael Gretzel. There are organic solar cells. And there are nowadays uh, new solar cells. Uh, they have recently been uh, launched with a very high yield, hybrid perovskite solar cells with a uh, yield of 20%, but their stability needs to be improved. These cells are multicolored cells. There are different processes, manufacturing processes, and here we have a titanium oxide matrix on which dye molecules are grafted, and this is the reason why we have green, red colors, and this is very flexible and very easy to use. Now, what matters here is that all the cells that I have just described had uh, a yield that did not exceed 25%. Theoretically, the maximum uh, yield would be 33% for two-level cells. Why? Because red photons are not absorbed, they do not have enough energy, and the blue photons that are within the UV spectrum have too much energy, and only a small fraction of the energy is recovered, the rest is lost and turns into heat. Now, according to theoretical calculations, the conversion yield could be increased to 85%. The question is, can we make systems that will go at least higher than the uh, threshold of 33%? And we already have multi-junction options for each wavelength. We add a junction which is perfectly adjusted to that photon, and we superimpose them so that the photons they go through are recovered by another, and there are triple junctions, the yield of which should theoretically exceed 50% or even more. In concrete terms, for triple junction, one junction takes the blue, one takes the visible spectrum, and the third one takes the uh, infrared. We superimpose approximately 30 layers with junctions that allow to reach higher yields, and the maximum yield that has currently been achieved is 45% under concentration with triple junctions. 32 layers, or approximately 30 layers, that means a lot, it's difficult. Could there be another way to achieve high yields? There are new concepts being studied that would allow to achieve this result. The first one I would like to share with you is the photon conversion concept. In will take blue photons are converted in visible photons or red photons are converted in visible photons using materials the properties of which allow them to rise the electron to higher levels thanks to multiple photons or to bring them down releasing more photons within a high-quality cell, silicium, CIGS, or others. Here we have another concept, the intermediate band uh, concept. In the forbidden band, we add a level. Two photons, or the infrared photons, are absorbed and can contribute to the photo current, reaching 50% yield. 
Finally, the last concept I wanted to show you is the uh, hot carrier solar cell concept. Electrons in holes, which initially are absorbed with the same energy as the photon, before they thermalize, we try to uh, extract them into the external circuit, and this concept also should uh, provide uh, yields uh, in excess of 50%. However, however these two last concepts are still being studied in the laboratories. But in the photovoltaic world, we see an accelerated development. There is a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, and uh, many different uh, research fields. Here we have the Olympic Games of all the options for photovoltaic cells. And we see here that in the last few years, there are a number of new researchers and projects being launched uh, with higher yields. And this is also linked to the fact that there is industrial development taking place, encouraging research in much greater proportion than 15 or 20 years ago. Merci.